Since its founding in 1951, the National Museum Krusevac collects, preserves, protects and exposes movable cultural goods and remains of material culture of homeland. In addition to the central building of the museum within the complex of the medieval fortress, the Krusevac National Museum includes several other buildings in the city itself, Art Gallery, the Simic House, and Memorial Complex, Slobodist, with mass graves from Wuntu, and the landscape concept realized by the architect Bogdan Boganovich in the period 1961-65. The Memorial Complex. Slobodist is currently in the process of complete reconstruction and creation of a permanent museum exhibition, which entails extensive construction and protective operations at the Slobodist Dome, the main building of the complex, as well as the selection and conservation of material for the new permanent exhibition dedicated to the memory culture. Historical Context Slobodist is located southwest of the center of Krusevac, on the slopes of the Bagdala Hill. It is located on the site of a shooting range, founded in the years before the 1-2 near the penitentiary. After the German occupation in 1941, this area became a kind of mini-concentration camp for hostages and political prisoners from Krusevac and the surrounding area, and as early as October 1941, shootings began as a form of retaliation and repression. During the war, from 1941 to 1944, close to 1,650 people are killed mostly communist partisans, Chetniks, supporters of monarchical restoration, their supporters, civilian hostages, as well as the Roma population. The largest shooting in Slobodiste took place in June and July 1943, as a measure of retaliation for the attack on German troops in Kraljevo a few weeks earlier. This shooting was supposed to start on June 28th, but as that day was the great Serbian national holiday St. Vitus Day, or Vidovdan, the provisional authorities managed to postpone the start of the shooting for a day later. Memorial Complex The camp was demolished in 1949, and a 80-hectare memorial park was built in its place. The decision to build a memorial complex was made by the city of Krusevac in 1964. At the suggestion of Dobrika Kosik, writer, academician, and later president of Yugoslavia, 1992-93, the monument was designed and realized by architect and academician Bogdan Bogdanovich, the greatest authority in the field of memorial monument architecture, later the mayor of Belgrade, 1982-86. At Slobodist, Bogdanovich worked in the period 1960-65 under the slogan, Under this sky, man, stand up straight. Bread and freedom are the same to us. According to the author's idea, the Slobodized complex had the symbolism of a temple. The basic elements of the relief are mounds, and the entire space is shaped organically, with arches and circles, while consciously avoiding angular surfaces and straight lines. The very center of the park can be reached from the mounds with burners through the circular gate of the sun. The path then leads past the Valley of the Living, an amphitheater with a stage, to the Valley of the Tribute, with a burner. The scaffold, located next to the amphitheater, is marked with a memorial plaque. The Slobodista Dome, as building for administration and temporary exhibitions, was added later in 1978 as a result of Bogdanovich's collaboration with local architect Svetislav Zivik. In the shape of a semicircular mound, the home is built of concrete covered with earth, stylistically following the existing elements and at the same time representing the first ecologically conceived project in Yugoslavia. The entire complex was declared a cultural property. A remarkable place of the great importance, R.S. Official Gazette, No. 2883, Re-Valorization. Although Slobodist was one of the most visited monuments of Yugoslavia, through which about 100,000 people passed annually, in the years of the state's disintegration and turning away from all the heritage that was perceived as ideological and communist, Slobodist began to decline and was almost completely forgotten over time. The central festivities of freedom, the city's largest manifestation at the end of June, were moved from Slobodist to other locations over time, and the basic idea of freedom was replaced by the idea of Vidovdan. The complex, established as an independent institution, is now attached to the museum, under the pretext of savings. The funds allocated for the needs of the museum in the turbulent years of the 1990s were reduced to the barest minimum, which led to a rapid decline. Incompatibility with the new historical and political circumstances, helplessness, professional deprivation, 
and above all, a general social negligence, both during the crisis decades of the 1990s and 2000s, left the most visible traces on Slobodist. The entire complex has been vandalized on several occasions, and the lack of investment has led to deterioration, which was most reflected in the Slobodest Dome itself. In the second decade of the 21st century, conditions are being met for a more responsible approach to the monumental heritage from the period after the one Yun two. Ideological prejudices, exclusivity in approach and cheap politics give way to a different view and a new valorization and affirmation of this important segment of our national culture. On that wave, the conditions are being met for a new valorization of Slobodiste and its remapping. Reconstruction Due to the size and importance of the project, the reconstruction of the exceptional historical complex was supported by the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Labor, as well as the local government. The renovation of the neglected building and memorial elements within the park on 80 hectares began in 2020 and, in the previous stages, included the construction of the drainage of the earthen roof, thermal, and waterproofing of the tumulus-shaped dome. The biggest problem concerned the remediation of moisture that penetrated the building and seriously endangered it. The preliminary works concerned the removal of soil deposits from the reinforced structure itself and redraining, after which required to put on the soil and grass cover again. But it was necessary to repeat the procedure due to the insufficient expertise of the contractor and the supervising architect. In two years, the entire procedure was repeated twice, with the strengthening of the protective layer and the remediation of all the consequences of moisture in the space that once was considered the very first exemplum of eco-architecture in this region. After the reports related to the second phase of the project, 2021, and the interior works have been submitted, the reconstruction enters the final phase and comes to an end. The entire infrastructure has been renovated, which includes heating, sewage network, electrical installations, water supply, souvenir shop, and the interior work has also been completed. Last year, in 2022, the third and final phase of the works began, which the Ministry of Culture supported with significant funds, necessary to bring the started works to an end and return the building to its intended purpose, which would give the city of Krusevac and its museum a functional and modernly equipped space. It is planned that the Slobodist Dome will have 250 square meters of exhibition space, offices with accompanying rooms and a souvenir shop. The idea is that in addition to the permanent museum exhibit, the space will also be open for exhibitions that are thematically linked to the idea and the concept of the complex that played a significant role in the post-W2 history of the city. Conservation Exempla Preventive conservation is an important element of museum protection and collection care. One of the important responsibilities of members of the museum profession is to create and maintain environmental conditions favorable for the sustainability of collections, whether in the depot, during exhibitions, or in transit. The museum is obliged to carefully and continuously monitor the state of the collections in order to be able to decide appropriately and on time whether an object should undergo conservation and restoration. Due to the need for work on the new permanent exhibition, the responsible curator and the author's team inspected the material, and after the selection, the conservation procedure was initiated within the expert conservation department of the Krusevac Museum, where each object is treated according to the material and damage. One of the selected exhibits is the incendiary bomb that fell on the city during the Nazi bombing in April 1941. Over the decades, it was carelessly stored away, eventually ending up in the museum's courtyard, where time and atmospheric conditions took their toll, which is why it is in a state of corrosion. Among the material are weapons, which were used both by the Nazis and by members of the resistance movements, and we are talking about weapons of foreign origin. This simplest, in principle, but it can also be very complex, and most common intervention on objects can be mechanical, chemical, electrochemical, ultrasonic, and laser. Cleaning is aimed at removing dirt and corrosion layers. Archaeological finds are cleaned exclusively mechanically to the original surface. It is a layer of patina formed after the object was abandoned, that is, by no means to pure metal. For historical objects, phosphoric acid solution, 5-15%, Ammonium citrate, pH 3, 5 fifths percent, or polymethacrylic acid gel is most often used. Chemical agents must not be used for burnished or blued objects, but only kerosene or a mixture of kerosene and paraffin, 
1 liter of kerosene plus 20 G of paraffin, or ready-made products Ballastol and VD-40. It is also possible to clean with ultrasound, electrolysis, or laser. Archaeological objects are cleaned exclusively mechanically. Extra measures of precaution should be undertook when the object is composed out of multiple materials, metal and wood, metal and gems, etc., because the conservation methods aren't the same for every type of material. The liquidations in Slobodist were accompanied by public declarations of the occupiers as a form of intimidation and control of citizens. They indicate the Nazi need for the pacification of Serbia and at the same time equality in the approach to both resistance movements operating on the territory of occupied Serbia as well as Yugoslavia, monarchist and communist. It is a sensitive paper material for which, apart from basic prevention, the museum does not have an adequate conservation workshop. Therefore, under our conditions, only mechanical cleaning is used, while more significant or damaged specimens are sent to Belgrade, to the professional conservation workshop that exists at the National Library of Serbia or at the Academy of the Serbian Orthodox Church. The paper materials include letters and messages from prisoners to their relatives, as well as some photo material, original or copies. Origins of decay on paper objects can be chemical, biological, or physical. Paper objects have strict rules about their safekeeping and exposure. Store items at a temperature of around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, 45 to 55 percent relative humidity, and up to 50 LX lighting level. Reduce ultraviolet radiation to a minimum. It is mandatory to control the air condition in storage rooms, chemical and microbiological pollution. It is mandatory to control the possible presence of pests as often as possible, to minimize direct contact with objects to store particularly valuable items in rooms or packaging with a modified atmosphere. Packaging must necessarily be made of acid-free or buffered material. In the storage room, avoid shelves made of wood or plywood and chipboard. All the mentioned measures should also be applied when exhibiting the object. Items exhibited on Slobodist have been mechanically cleaned via cotton wool and distilled water due to their fairly good current state. The most poignant among the exhibits is certainly the woman's hair, twisted into a braid taken off the prisoner's head upon arrival at the prison. Human hair is a fragile organic material, which is sensitive to light, temperature, and relative humidity. For this particular item, no conservational methods were used because it was kept in a place where the environment was unchanged, thus leaving the conservational processes redundant. This item will be displayed within an exhibition case in which the conditions will be alike to its safekeeping conditions. Challenges the park's monumental elements, the Birds of Peace and the Gate of the Sun, have already been conserved but are faced with a constant anthropological threat. During the past seven years, tin layers from the Gate of the Sun have been removed during the night by unknown vandals. One of the stone birds depicting souls of the mass shootings was also damaged by unknown vandals and had to be repaired by the joint action from conservationists from National Museum Kruzevac and the Republic Institute for Protection of Monuments. Graffiti were a regular occurrence until video surveillance was established. Also, the park itself was being altered by implementation of various items, which have no connection whatsoever to its original purpose. Most prominent example of this is the so-called Dino Park, an amusement park with a dinosaur theme, is constructed on the outskirts of Memorial Park. Simply by its existence, Slobodiste is losing its identity and purpose, becoming just another ordinary park in our city. Due to its immense size of 65 hectares, any type of surveillance which could prevent these acts of vandalism is obsolete, but it could help in finding the responsible persons and minimizing the damage done.